Today, I want to talk about a growing issue within speedrunning, which left unchecked, threatens the legitimacy of every single leaderboard. Technology has advanced to the point where it's fairly easy to create a fake speedrun which cannot be detected. I fear many leaderboards are plagued with fake speedruns that we have no real ability to find. To make this point, I want to take a closer look at the runner Downtime Death. Downtime Death was a runner who rocketed his way up the A Link to the Past leaderboards in record time. Fellow runner WQ could tell something was up and began to document Downtime Death's unusual rate of improvement. This was largely met with laughter and nothing was done about it. The key piece of evidence which proved his runs were fake is right here. During the fight with Ganon, fireballs spawn all around him in a ring. The way that the fireballs spawn around him appeared to be random, and for many years that's what runners thought. That was until some tool-assisted speedrunners showed that in fact it's not random, but instead tied into another variable used during the Ice Armos fight. With this new knowledge in hand, Downtime Death's runs were reanalyzed, and it was found that the Ice Armos fight did not match the Ganon fight. This left only one reasonable explanation, splicing. The amazing part about this was the organized effort to keep this information from the public and to keep his times on the leaderboard even after this proof was discovered. I called WQ to ask him for more info on this. Here's what he had to say. The first week of January at GDQ, he posted the first fake run. Two weeks later, he took the run down and people were like, what happened to that run? And I had never seen the run. I'm like, well, what, where is the run? And eventually we gave me the run and there was no audio in it, which I thought was really strange. And the run's like way too good for his skill level. Everybody thought he was legit and they just kind of threw every question mark under the rug and just assumed he was legit. And since I had re I was taking a break, I just left the scene again. It was in March that somebody else posted actual like hard proof that he cheated. That's a big deal because he had spent January, February, and most of March just lying to people, goofing around, making these fake runs. Like it was awful. That's when the silent Sophie thing started. He like disappeared. He's like, okay, whatever. He's like, it's my birthday. I don't want to deal with these accusations. So he leaves. And then two weeks after he's exposed for cheating, he made a completely new account called Silent Sophie. And he was pretending to get PBs from, I think his first run was like a 138. And next week at a 132 and then a 130. And he, he claimed that he's a girl from, I think, Germany or, or England. And he would practice on his like bi-weekly plane trip or something. Mm -hmm. I, he didn't track his IP, he didn't change his IP. That's how people found it out. Eventually, I think people did wake up when he got a 124, which was his original goal. People were like, yeah, okay. So they checked the IPs. It was downtime death. Like speedruns live tracks IPs, but they don't tell you. That's how they keep finding downtime death. They, they've caught him like five times on this. One of his streams, he like did this kind of stunt to make himself look legitimate. And he used a voice changer and pretended to be a girl. And then uh, everyone was like, oh, sick. It's not downtime death. Sweet. It's a real person. It's great. One day, somebody did me like, okay, yeah, it's downtime death, silent Sophie. And I'm like, great. The next day, downtime death on the speedrun.com leaderboards. And this is after, this is after it's already been proven that he cheated. Yeah. They put him, they put him back on the leaderboards after it was already proven that he cheated yeah. and removed him. This is, this is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Like, like, what is, like, how is that possible? Like, how is it possible for a guy who's been cheating, like just straight cheating, splicing runs, lying about the splice runs. He spliced fake evidence at one point. There's the famous Cannon's Tower. He made a fake account. He used a voice changer. I mean, this is absurd. I want to ask you, so the person, the person who actually removed his times was crystal correct i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that's what happened that's what it looked to me from the chat logs that crystal had removed them i guess it's not we don't know for certain but the funny thing is crystal also has had her times removed correct yeah, really. so it really shows you it's not it's not just that one guy is like come in he's gotten away with it it's like it's woven or at least it was i don't know what it's like today but it was certainly woven into the fabric of the community where I, I don't know if everyone knew what was going on, but the way the group operated, it allowed people to cheat and get away with it. That's 100% how I feel. And that was the issue, because there were actually two more cheaters past downtime death that were like kind of in his like group. 
this is this issue I always complain about in speedrunning. It's like the click scene in speedrunning. People don't play the game for the game. They play it for their friend circle. And when you play a game for your friend circle, cheating is a lot more okay because, oh, he's my friend. He would never lie. I mean, there's like these issues that pop up. But let me go back over. In June, what happened was um, he was put back on the leaderboard because some of the moderators or all the moderators, I'm not really sure. They actually apparently talked to him in private and he confessed everything. And so they put his quotation, they put his real runs on the leaderboard. That's what I heard. That's incredible. So it's like they want they want so badly to put his times on the leaderboard. They're just looking for any, oh, look, he finally, he finally confessed yeah. after lying 30 times. He finally confessed, so now we're going to trust him and put these times up there. This is when I left the scene. I stopped using the leaderboard and I left the Discord because I'm just, I can't deal with this trash. You made a video actually on the audio editing audio and like fixing the audio so they can't detect splices i tried looking through it a little i think i spent four days looking through it i am not an audio technician though so it's like at the end of the day i couldn't find anything i had it i had a guy who did have some um, background in audio and he couldn't find anything either the thing is downtime death was he was kept telling people he's like well find the splice where i can i can give you line in audio on a i mean he was taunting us on that he knew how to get past that this is like the main thing I guess I want to get to is what does this mean for the the future of proof standards? Because the only reason this guy ever got caught and ever got his times removed was because he messed up or whatever new knowledge was found that yeah, he, outed him yeah, as a yeah. splicer. But if he had already known that, he could have gotten away with it and he'd probably still be up there. What does that mean for the the sta the proof standards going forward? It's like if the rules can be broken and if you break them perfectly you can get away with it then i kind of wonder if the rules need adjusting i'm i'm leaning heavily in that department you were talking about crystal earlier the other infamous cheater in link the past um the thing with crystal is that you can't prove crystal's runs are fake there's there's nothing in the runs that's like provably fake but they're not real like there's just no way they're real like it, it's absurd to think they're real and that's that's not a very satisfactory answer to say yeah because as like a as a runner you know what to look for and you can look at it and you can say okay this is not add up this is fishy this is not right but for an outsider for people to just say this doesn't look real that's not a that's not a great standard you know it's a really big issue with crystal because i can make a run that's as fake as crystal's run and you could not tell it's fake what happens as these task spots become more and more abundant and people oh, start yeah. just plugging in their task spot and doing their their run then there's no splices i mean that is a perfect method of cheating i think i don't know there's, it's getting to the point where it, or it has gone to the point where video it's not even proof it's just kind of evidence it's, it's like yeah you probably yeah. got this but it doesn't prove it I was talking to Sig Lemmick about this, actually. He showed me a video on how to make a task bot. It's not that hard. You can make a task bot, like, in a few days. Or... I bet you at some point people are going to start commercially producing them. Yeah, I mean, it, this is an issue. And then, so this was my solution to it. Crystal, she actually was a cheater in a game before I leave the past called Beat Manias 2DX, IIDX. Um, it's like a huge rhythm game in japan it's very popular and crystal was always the best player or like the top five but same string of lies deceit and uh, malice at the end of the day the japanese community made hand cam um standardized you have to play hand cam for your records to be relevant i think it was a smart move because mandating hand cam or mandating some kind of referee system is really the only way to get around cheating. I think the standards of leaderboards should be fixed. I mean, I think it's like, it, right now the link to pass leaderboards, most of the times are just video feed. Like, the, there's no way to know any, like none of these, I don't know the play people. The, the standards for proof are just a joke. Like, like I know my runs are real and anybody who watches the runs, you can uh, come to the conclusion that they're real if you look at the numbers. I think there's two other players on the top 10 in link to pass like that. That's just absurd. Like that needs that needs to be changed. Also, look at any other competition. Okay, Rubik's cubing. I used to do speed cubing. If you get a time offline, it doesn't count. You have to do it at an event. So, what do you think? Do we need to require hand cam for top level runs? Do we need to have sanctioned refs who verify times live? Or is everything okay just the way it is? 
I'm going to be discussing this further with WQ tomorrow at dlive.tv slash Apollo Legend. The stream will take place at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I hope to see you there. It should be a fun one. Alright guys, I love you all. Take care.